Welcome to Floracast, the podcast for greenhouse growers. Floracast is brought to you by Greenhouse Grower Magazine, in conjunction with the University of New Hampshire, North Carolina State University, Kansas State University, and Cornell University. Thanks to this podcast sponsor, Fine Americas. This week's podcast is from Brian Whipker of North Carolina State University. Welcome to this podcast discussing plant growth regulators. Today we will talk about how plant growth regulators work in controlling internodal stretch. PGRs are tools to help make growing easier. It is useful to understand how they work in controlling excessive stretch. To do this, let's discuss the gibberellin metabolic pathway. The pathway is a chemical chain of events which leads to the production of GA. GA is a plant hormone which stimulates cell elongation in plants. Therefore, if you manage GA production, you will be able to manage plant growth. There are a number of PGRs available to growers. Not all of them work the same. The ones which inhibit GA production are called type 2 cell elongation inhibitors. Cell elongation inhibitors influence the degree of cell expansion. New cells are produced at the growing tip of the plant. Over time, the cells begin to grow. Without a PGR, the cells can stretch and grow. PGRs play a role in limiting the amount of expansion which occurs. You can see how applying GAs can stretch plants. In this case, the grower had balloon flower plants stall, so GA was applied to try to salvage the plant on the left. While the spray treatment was not successful, you can see how plant growth was encouraged. Note that the plant on the right was from the next plug shipment and it was growing normally. It is also important to note that anti-GA PGRs control cell elongation and not cell number. The cell number is the same with or without a PGR application, and the non-treated plants are just taller. Here is an example of how anti-GA PGRs work. The plant on the left did not have a PGR applied. The one on the right did. As you can see, the application of PGR limited leaf cell elongation and the leaves were smaller. So which PGRs control the GA pathway? The chemical name is listed on the left, while the various trade names are listed on the right. These are Acimidol, which is also known by Abide or Arest, Chlormoquat Chloride, which is Citadel, Chlormoquat Epro or Cyclocell, Deminazide, known as B9 or Dazide, Fluoroprimidol, which is known as Top Fluor, the Paclobutrazoles of Bonsai, Paxol, Piccolo, Piccolo 10X, and Downsize, and then finally Uniconazole, which is Concise or Sumagic. Also note that Floral, Agio, Configure, and Fascination are not on the list. That's because they work differently in the plant. The type 2 PGRs are classified into three groups. Group A contains only chlormoquat. Group B are the nitrogen-containing heterocyclic compounds, which include the pyrimidines, acimidol, and fluoroprimidol, plus the triazoles of paclobutrazole and uticonazole. Group C contains dimenazide. Next, we will see why the three groups are classified in different subcategories. Here is an illustration of the GA metabolic pathway. As with any pathway, one chemical is formed and then biochemically another one is produced. It might be useful to think of it as water flowing down a stream. The end result of this stream is the production of gibberellins, which encourages plant stretch. The reason for the subgroups is because they work at different sites along the pathway. So applying the group B PGRs act like a beaver dam. The water is controlled, but keep in mind, just like a beaver dam, the water flow is not totally stopped. The same thing occurs with PGRs. They partially block the GEA to control growth. If they totally stop GA synthesis, then all plant growth would cease and that wouldn't be a great thing. The end result with the block pathway is that growth is controlled and the plants are shorter. Chlormoquat also blocks the pathway, but it occurs further upstream. That's the reason why it's classified in group A. Deminazide blocks the pathway further downstream, and that's why it's classified in group C. So with these three groups of chemicals, they each control growth at a different point. This is the reason why tank mixing with some chemicals like cyclocell and B9 can give a synergistic effect on poinsettias. The double action of blocking the pathway provides a 3x degree of control. So now you know how anti-GA PGRs work. They control the production of the plant hormone GA which influences cell elongation. 
Each of the three groups of PGRs work at a different point in the GA biosynthesis pathway. Therefore, you have the possibility of tank mixing some of the PGRs to obtain a synergistic effect. Thanks for downloading this episode of the Floracast series, and thanks to our sponsor, Fine Americas. Help your plants shape up before they ship out with proven PGRs from Fine Americas. Manufactured under the strictest ISO 9001 standards, Fine PGRs offer uncompromising quality, superb growth control, and unbeatable value. Visit fine-americas.com or call 888-474-3463 for a distributor near you. Come back next week for the next edition of the Floriculture Podcast Series.